In this episode of Gear Garage, I want to talk about the vector pull. The vector pull is commonly taught in modern rescue classes as a way to get mechanical advantage. Let's say our raft is stuck here. We attach a rope and we pull down. And that pulling down creates tension in the rope that's more than we pull down. And theoretically, it mathematically, in space, with a rope that doesn't stretch, it could create infinite tension in the rope. It doesn't actually happen because it's infinite. But at this moment, it creates a lot of tension. And so we're going to look at a real example where we pull on it and the rope stretches and it creates this angle right here with what it was before that we're going to call theta. And we're going to pull on it with some force F. That's our force, which creates a tension in the rope that is the same throughout the whole rope. It, could be different depending on some factors, but let's just assume that we're pulling exactly halfway down and, and or that it's not rigidly attached. So the mechanical advantage is the output force divided by the input force. It's the tension divided by the F. That's mechanical advantage. So if I put in 100 pounds of force and I get 300 out, my mechanical advantage is just three to one. With a Z-Rig, it is theoretically three to one based on the math you work out. It's gonna be a little bit different here. So we're gonna go down to some math stuff and some trigonometry stuff and some engineering stuff. And it's more physics than engineering, but we're gonna do some nerdy math, kind of follow along the best you can. We're gonna do a free body diagram at this point. This is tension, this is tension, and this is the force down. And we're gonna break the vectors into their, their X and Y components. And if this, this will be the angle theta in here based on just some math, like this, whatever this angle was here is also that angle here, making this part T uh, sine theta and making this vertical part T sine theta. Now you may have no idea what I'm talking about, which is great. But if you do follow along, we're gonna sum the forces in the Y direction. So this force is counteracted by this force and this force. So this force, F equals T sine theta plus T sine theta. That's from our free body diagram, which says that force is basically two T sine theta. And our goal is to get mechanical advantage, which is T over F. So I'm gonna divide both sides by F. So I get one equals two T sine, oops, sine theta over F. And I'm gonna divide both sides by two sine theta and switch things around. I'm gonna do a couple math steps in a row here, but I basically get T over F equals one over two sine theta. Or I could say mechanical advantage equals one over two sine theta. And this is an equation for the mechanical advantage based on the angle that's created. And we can graph this. I'll put a graph up somewhere showing this. It's when theta is small, the mechanical advantage is very large. But when, when theta gets to even 10 degrees, the mechanical advantage drops to like 2.8 to 1. And 10 degrees is not a lot of degrees. If you get a protractor out, 10 degrees is not very much. This is probably more than 10 degrees here. So you're getting at 10 degrees, you're getting 2.8 to 1. At 20, I'm looking at a graph right there. I'll put this other graph up on the thing to look at. Oh, probably over here. At 20 degrees, it's 1.46 to 1. And at 30 degrees, it's just 1 to 1. And at 5 degrees, it's 5.7 to 1. Which 5 degrees, again, is not much. 10 wasn't much. 5 is even less. So you're going to get about the same mechanical advantage as a Z-Rig unless you can keep your angle really low, which is really hard to do. So again, at, at 10 degrees, you're at 2.87 to 1 which is theoretically less than three to one. Now let's talk about how rope stretch affects all of this because all ropes do stretch. A really good static line will stretch about 2% when pulled on 300 pounds. A mediocre rope will stretch 8% when pulled 300 pounds. So we're probably between two and 8% elongation when pulled 300 pounds, which is not that hard to do. If somebody's pulling hundred pounds here, which shouldn't be that hard, we can generally pull our body weight. So pulling hundred pounds, most people can do that it will apply about 300 pounds of force if this is a good vector pull. If this angle is 10 degrees or less, 
we can get near 100 pounds. So let's just assume we're going to get either we're going to get 2% stretch based on one pull, one person pulling on this vector pull. So if the length of the rope is just some amount x, half of the length of the rope is x over 2. And this part right here has stretched 2%. So this part is x over 2 times 1.02. It's just a little bit bigger because of the 2% stretch. So based on some trigonometry, and those of you that know trig, this will be easy. The rest of you can just follow along. The cosine of this angle, this is the angle theta that we used in the last part. The cosine of theta is x over 2 divided by x over 2 times 1.02. These two things cancel, so I get the cosine of theta is 1 over 1.02. And the, the angle, the angle theta we're looking for, theta is 1, sorry, cosine inverse, the arc cosine of 1 over 1.02. If you put this into a calculator, you're going to get, and take a guess here, at what angle, if this stretches 2%, what angle will this be? It ends up being 11 degrees. So 2% stretch means an 11 degree angle is theta. And remember, around 10 degrees, we were looking like a 2.8 to 1. So this is actually already at 2.7 to 1. If you do the same thing with an 8% stretch, 1.08, you put 1.08 in here, you get 22 degrees which gets you to about 1.4 to 1. So based just on rope stretch, the rope naturally stretching, vector pulls are rarely like that great because this, the, the, this angle gets bigger based just on the rope getting longer. Now you can keep t shortening the rope. There are techniques you can do to overcome this, but just a basic vector pull, you get to these angles pretty quick that become like 1.4 to 1, 1.3 to 1 that aren't really that effective. So. That's some quick math on vector pulls. Uh, if you have thoughts about any of the math or questions, or if I made a mistake, maybe you're like, Zach, your math is wrong. I don't think it is. I think I know what I'm talking about. But if you have some sort of issue with it, please let me know in the comments. I really like using these videos as ways for me to learn. So I, if you have some of the thoughts or I made some assumptions I shouldn't have made, I would love to know that, that assumption. Put it in the comments below. I do have more things I want to talk about the vector pull, but I'd love to have a conversation based on this video before we move on to the next one. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you in the next video.